Um, I wanted to come to you this morning for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that this evening we have our Why Are You You Zoom right about the time I would normally be doing our Time for All Ages. So I wanted to still be able to have our time together. And the other reason is that I wanted to talk to you about ritual. And my favorite rituals that I do during the week happen on Saturdays. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to go ahead and light the chalice. So here's our chalice lighting today. For the warmth of being together. And I don't know if you've noticed, but my chalice is actually just a candle on top of my old chalice that I got when I was in high school. So chalices don't have to be big, ornate things that we get from other people. It could be whatever we make them to be. And letting a chalice is part of our ritual. So uh, you can probably hear some nom nomming in the background, but I just fed the boys. Actually, Audrey, who is holding the, the iPad for me today, just fed the boys, and they're feeling very noisy eaters today. So I'm sorry if you have that, but I think they're excited. The ritual I'm going to talk to you about is eggs. So our ritual every every Saturday is that we have poached eggs and toast for breakfast. And it doesn't seem like it would be that big of a ritual, but it's a small thing and it's something that we do together that really roots us. And that's the importance of rituals. Rituals root us in things. And I bet if you think about it, your family has rituals that you do every Saturday or you do every morning and they're important to you. Maybe you have rituals that you do before bed every night. Maybe you read or you sing a song together. Maybe you do a meditation or a prayer. So these are things that are everyday things, but they're sacred because sacred things are made sacred by the intention that we give to them. So now, how to make the perfect poached egg. So if you want to have my Saturday ritual, you can have it too. Come on over. So something that I started doing before I started recording was I started this um, stove boiling with a pretty deep pot of water. And moms and dads or grandparents are probably the best ones to start the stove unless you're super familiar with it or unless you're, you know, an old hat at cooking. So after you start your, your water boiling and sometimes before it, you want to add a little bit of vinegar. It doesn't actually have to be vinegar. Some people use lemon juice. Some people use white vinegar. Some people use red wine vinegar. I tend to use whatever vinegar bottle has the most vinegar in it in the house so that we don't run out. So you pour a little bit in. I'm sure there's a measurement you're supposed to do, but I just stop when my ancestors tell me to. So we set that boiling and we put the lid on it. And what I like to do is I like to pre-crack my eggs. Some people take their eggs and go ahead and put them in smaller bowls so that they can just kind of bloop them and keep them all together. But I like to keep it exciting. So I will crack them so they're easy to put in really fast, but not open them just yet. I have a corner here that's like my egg cracking corner. It's part of the ritual. You'll find your own egg cracking corner. Now I'm gonna come over here and check on the water. It's not quite done boiling yet. So I want to talk to you while we're waiting to boil about why it's important to have rituals and sacred moments in our lives. Sometimes there are things we can't control. Draco, come here. Draco was just eating his brother's <laughs> food and he shouldn't have been eating his brother's food. So now we have to go take his brother's food away from him. Draco, where are you? Come here, Draco. Sit, back. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. Can you say hi? Okay, that's a good here. <laughs> We're working on that. Draco is pretty young. So, sacred rituals? Yes, like they're important. So, they're important because the time that you spend together and the intentionality of it can really root you. So we can't always control the things that are going on in the outside world, but we can control is our time together and our time with our loved ones. And having things that make us feel safe and secure and that we do every day reminds us that there are things we can control in the world and that the things we can control are great, like how we love each other. And it looks like my water's starting to boil. Shall we come over and see? Ah, very nice rolling boil. If I can manage not to boil the water over myself. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spoon 
It doesn't have to be a wooden spoon, but I really like wooden spoons. My mom used wooden spoons when I was growing up, and I think they're a lot of fun. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to stir the water so that it makes a whirlpool. And while I stir, the camera will come over and see, but you'll know what I'm doing. I'm swirling my water so I get a really good whirlpool going. Think like water spout level of whirlpool. And then once I do that, I'm going to drop my eggs into the whirlpool after I turn it down to medium. So I'm going to go down to like a low medium boil, spin my water so I get my good whirlpool. You probably can't see it because it's so steamy. And now I'm going to drop in my eggs. Bloop. Now, if you can avoid your eggs touching, you want to do that. And you can get your eggs going in the whirlpool. But my eggs have this habit of what I call fraternizing and they just like to touch each other. And sometimes you just gotta let eggs be eggs and go with it. So once you get your eggs in, you're gonna turn up the, turn up the heat back to a medium. And I set my kitchen timer for four minutes because that tells me how much time, and I'm gonna wash my hands because I'm a messy egg cracker. So my eggs are gonna cook for four minutes before I take them out. It doesn't always have to be four minutes. When I was learning how to poach eggs, I read that eggs are supposed to poach between three and five minutes. It depends on how runny you are, but we like our eggs to have a little bit of goo in the center. So that's why we go for four, which is right in the medium category. Now, the last thing I have to do, besides taking my eggshells over to what will be my compost bucket that I will bring to church on my next visit, is I have to set up my bowls. So we always use these bowls. They were my grandma's. And then we take a paper towel and we put a paper towel in the bottom of each bowl. Please excuse our messy kitchen. And you fold it in quarters so that when you take the eggs out, it absorbs all the water. Now what we do with our eggs is we put it on toast. And that's how we eat it. Sometimes we add some everything bagel seasoning. And that's our breakfast and that's our ritual. Saturday morning breakfast rituals have been important to me since I was a little girl. Because my parents worked during the week, so Saturday morning was the first breakfast that I would get to eat with him all week. And my mom would make a really big breakfast. In the comments below, I would really love it if you could tell me what your family rituals are. Do you make breakfast and eat, eat, eat uh, breakfast in your PJs on Saturdays? Do you do Sunday after church lunch? Do you go on a hike every weekend? What are the rituals and routines that you and your family do to keep you rooted? Share them and then we can talk about them a little bit when we do our time for all ages tomorrow. In the meantime, let's go ahead and extinguish our chalice. And remember that just because the flame goes out in the candle, we carry the flame in our hearts. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful weekend.